here and welcome back to A-Level Lessons Online. Okay, I'm going to be covering our first ever part of macroeconomics, the macroeconomics series today. I'm going to be covering circular flow of income. Okay, I know that a lot of you guys, especially the J2s, okay, if not some of you guys, have already actually started to cover what exactly macroeconomics is all about. So microeconomics will still go on. I'll still be covering more of those uh, as time goes by. But I'd like to start on macroeconomics as well so that for those of you guys who are unsure of macroeconomics, at least you have an outlet here to um, ask any questions or to try and seek a better understanding of what it's all about. Okay, so microeconomics, we're going to start off with circular flow of income followed by your ADAS and then um, the, the rest like global trade, all that kind of things will come at a later stage. Today's video, I'm going to be covering circular flow of income, right? So let's jump right in. Okay, so yeah, actually, circular flow of income isn't exactly, say, the most important thing in macroeconomics. It's just a preamble, okay, more of like a under a, a beginner stage understanding to what macroeconomics is going to be all about. Okay, so you've got four main characters in any economy. You have got the households, basically you and I, consumers, okay, we basically provide factors of production like labour. Okay, then you've got firms. Okay, firms are the ones who supply and provide the goods and services, as well as demand for the labour, demand for these factors of production. After which you have got the government themselves. Okay, what the government does is to always correct market failures. They aim to intervene okay, when, when markets are inefficient, or either that to try and achieve social stability in the economy as well. Okay, and lastly, you have got foreign sector, which is to basically... um bring in or out okay, any sort of imports and exports. Okay, remember that imports, like it sounds okay, in, im, okay, is basically coming in to the country. Exports is when it goes out of the economy. Alright? Okay, so the whole idea of circular flow of income, there are two main um, parts you need to really understand, which is going to be your withdrawals versus injections. Okay, think of withdrawals okay, as, for instance, when you withdraw money. Okay, you're basically taking out money from, in this case, the economy. So that's what withdrawal is about. Okay, is you're taking money out of the economy. They usually come in the form of savings, taxes, and imports. Okay, I'll go through exactly how the whole flow goes out uh, later on. Okay, on the other hand, you've got injections. Okay, when you inject something, when you go for an injection, is taking something and then putting it into your body, right? So injection, likewise, okay, is when you put money into an economy to finance it. So injections is money coming in. Withdrawals is money going out of the economy. Okay, remember macroeconomics, we're looking at entire economy. You're no longer looking at industry. You are no longer looking at just one firm. Okay, you're looking at the entire economy, the entire of Singapore, the entire of the United States, the entire of... um. Australia, okay, that is a whole economy in itself. Okay, so on the other hand, injections, okay, they will take the form of investments, government spending, and exports for uh, injections in this case, all right? So one more thing you just need to understand is the national income identity, whereby essentially national output, so the output of an economy, okay, how much is being produced, is equivalent to the national income. Okay, so that means the output is the same as the income, which is equivalent to the national expenditure. So essentially what this is saying is a very, very simple concept of how much money I put into an economy to reap a certain amount of goods would mean that that certain amount of goods is basically the revenue for the country as well. So that would be my national income. Okay, which is why later on, in, in the, you don't even have to, to, to fully understand this first. Okay, later on when we actually start to cover economic growth, when you learn more about real GDP, okay, real GDP which is actually the same as uh, national income, you understand why the output is exactly the same as the income, which is the same as the amount of uh, money that I've had first to actually inject into the economy to produce this output to begin with. So it's always going to achieve an equilibrium in this case. Okay? Okay, so then now we move on to the actual circular flow of income. So this may look very complicated, but don't. Don't ever see it as that complicated. Okay, essentially, um, what you see above over here, this is what we will look at as the economy. The bottom is basically, I mean, sorry, uh, uh, yeah, either an economy or let's say like a firm, okay, for instance. Um, basically, the more the bigger player in the, in the economy. Down below, you look at the factors of production, which is the household, okay? So essentially what happens is that the firm, okay, let's say you look at this as a company X, okay, the firm will have to pay a household, okay, for demanding, okay, certain um, um, factors such as your, your labor, okay, capital, okay, it will, it will be through this thing called factor payments, for instance, through um, your wages, your income, okay, so your own household income, the firm will have to basically pay to the household, so this is why there's an arrow over here on the left, Okay, so when a firm, uh, I mean, sorry, when a household actually uses this money to spend on the goods that the firm is producing, it will go back as a circle 
in the form of consumption of domestically produced goods and services. Remember, we're looking at domestic goods, okay, not foreign goods, okay, because you're just looking at one player as a firm, the, the domestic firm, as well as the domestic household. So money that comes in to the household from the firm as the form of income would then again go out from the household okay, in the form of um, let's say purchasing of goods okay but as a household you yourself as a consumer you know that you don't only just put, um, purchase goods right so for instance this is why there's the form of withdrawals okay is when money actually goes out of the economy they leave your household and they can come out in the form of savings okay let's say you put money into a bank to save money to generate interest it can also come out in the form of taxes okay you know some places like your gst service charge these are all taxes that will go to the government and it can also come out in the form of import expenditure. So, for instance, in the case of Singapore, okay, a lot of times um, you spend a lot of money on uh, imported goods, right? Because Singapore doesn't have natural resources. So, in that case, it will come out in the form of import expenditure, okay, by your purchasing goods that are, put, that are basically imported from overseas. That means goods that come into Singapore and you purchase them. For instance, Nike, Adidas, any of your foreign brands. Okay, so that is your foreign sector right there. Okay, but then from the bank itself, Okay, then it would then want to pump money back into the economy. But how do they pump money back? Okay, like we have said just now, okay, in order to ensure an equilibrium in your national income, okay, the firms have to actually produce a certain amount of goods. But the amount that the firms produce, the na- that national inc- that national output, okay, is actually the same as your national income and the same as your national expenditure. So whatever the expenditure is, which in this case is your withdrawals, right? Okay, it will have to come back full circle back to the firm. So banks would then, for instance, lend money to a firm in the form of investment. Okay, whereby the firm can actually um, borrow money from a bank to build on their investment such that they can produce more output. And like we have said, by producing more output is equivalent to your income. It will increase the national income as well as to increase um, um, the economic growth of the of the country, uh, the economy to, per se, like, basically. Okay, so that is what investment is all about. Okay, on the other hand, for the government as a player, they can actually induce government spending, for instance, to build more infrastructure, build more hospitals. Okay, all of these is also pumping money back into the economy, um, in the long run especially. Okay, and lastly, you've got export expenditure. So, for instance, goods that are produced in Singapore, for instance, microchips, okay, they can be exported out. Okay, and this will actually bring um, an increase in income to the to the economy as well okay because when you sell goods overseas you gain income right the income comes back in the form of um an increase in your overall national income of the country okay so you notice that actually the circular form of income is very very simple essentially you have got two players two main players huh? your firm as well as your household you have got banks government and foreign sector as well so these are the four main uh characters uh four slash 5k banks is the reason why i didn't include banks because it's not that huge a player okay but essentially it's all it's all part of the same system okay nothing will ever leave okay any money that goes into a bank in the end will have to come out in the form of investments any money that goes into the government for instance taxes usually the government spends your tax revenue right we've learned this in in micro econs right they spend your tax revenue on building uh, more public facilities public goods investing in public goods so end of the day everything will still come back to you somehow in the form of uh, either another tangible good or something intangible Okay, foreign sector imports and exports, okay, whatever that's being imported, okay, likewise, the economy will also export a certain amount and all of these will be injected back, okay, into, in this case, it looks like what we call a firm, okay, but essentially you're injecting it back into the economy. So whatever is withdrawn from the economy will have to be injected back somehow and that is why the circular flow of income is such that it is a flow of income and it is circular, okay, which means that it is self-sustaining. Okay, the entire, the income does not leave anywhere else. It only goes through all these players and through all these different withdrawals and injections. Right? So, the circular flow of income there will need to achieve certain equilibrium levels. Okay, for instance, when withdrawals equals to injections, your national income is at equilibrium. Okay, because whatever that's coming in is going out at the same amount, national income remains stable. There's no change. Okay, but when your withdrawals is more than your injections, your national income will fall. Okay, the reason why, if you look back here, when your withdrawals are more than your injections, it means that the economy is pumping out more money into the is 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 there's more money being taken out than there is money being taken in. So as a result, your national income, which means the income for that country, that economy, will definitely decrease. Okay, because more money is coming out than it is coming in. Okay, so likewise on the other hand, if withdrawals are less than injections, okay, your national income will actually increase. So if your injections are more than your withdrawals, okay, that means there's more money coming in. Definitely with lesser money coming out, 
okay, your overall national income will still increase. Okay, but end of the day, you realize that every economy seeks to make sure that case one is fulfilled, whereby withdrawals are equals to injections. Okay, that is usually the most ideal case. Okay, because um, there won't be an uh, too huge amount of additional income, neither would there be too little of a national income. Okay, every economy wants to achieve a very, very stable but yet growing gradually okay, um, economic growth, which means that your national income over time will have to increase slightly, which is why usually they aim for the first case or the last case. Okay, second case of withdrawals being more than injections is quite um, it will be a worrying issue already. So most economies will want to either try and achieve case one or either that case three, whereby national income grows slowly. Okay, later on we'll dive deeper okay, when we learn more about real GDP, inflation, economic growth as to how national income actually affects your national output, how does it affect um, the people in the economy and, and macro econs in general. Okay, for this video, it's very, very simple. Okay, if you didn't really understand, make sure you replay it again. Okay, so clear flow of income is very simple. Just remember withdrawals and injections. Money taken it out has to always come back in. Likewise, money taken in will always leave the economy as well. But they don't leave beyond that economy. They will take in their own economy um, internally um, to either fund certain different areas Okay, through investments, through government spending, through exports, or either that um, the, the money comes in through, through your, I mean, sorry, the money leaves okay, through your imports, your savings, and your taxes. All right, so go ahead and learn this hard case. Okay, it's, it's quite um, simple and easy to understand. If not, yeah, actually, that's all I have for this video already. Okay, if you guys did enjoy, okay, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Okay, leave a question down in the comment section below. I will make sure to answer it as well. Okay, if not, I will see you guys in the next one. Be sure to subscribe as well, okay? Bye-bye.